Welcome to the Top Order Podcast. It's that time of the week again. It's IPL Power Rankings time. We are going to rip this table to shreds over the course of the next 50 minutes or so. <laughs> Sounds we're, interesting. We're going to talk four or five minutes about each team as we reach up about five games in for most teams in the IPL leading into, where are we, week three, week four of the IPL? Must Something be about like week, Must be part, yeah, three or four, somewhere near there. Three or four, but it's all coming up on the Top Order Podcast. Stay tuned. Well, boys, it is power rankings time again. So um, for those new to the show, the format of uh, the power rankings, look, it changes, to be honest, doesn't it? Let, let's be brutally honest. But the concept is that we um, are going to talk about the teams uh, ranked from one down to 10, aren't we? Um, That's correct. And look, there is a little bit, obviously, that, that sort of will match the IPL table. But um, given that we've got some teams that have played, um, I think, five fixtures, some teams that have played... Uh, four fixtures and three. some teams that have played three fixtures all in this uh, all in this list. We're going to give you our view of where they actually sit um, in the tournament, not just based on the points table um, at the moment. We'll talk a little bit about whether or not there's teams that we're even going to write off out of this tournament. So um, all teams play 14 games. So some of them are a third of the way or thereabouts through their allotment. Um, and I think we're, we're willing to put a line through too, aren't we? All coming up um, in a sec, but Lippy, we'll start with you. Who's at the top of the power rankings according to the Lipshaw Index this week? So I, I guess the caveat here is that we're recording this Monday night New Zealand time and there is an absolutely massive game overnight with uh, CSK taking on KKR and, and obviously the result of that game might might have impacted, uh, possibly not impacted where I have KKR because uh, you know they're obviously doing very, very well. But CSK, I think it's a very pivotal game for them. So we'll get to them when we get to them but look the side I have on top is is Rajasthan and, and honestly like uh, you know four from four basically since the last pack power rankings they've smashed Mumbai you know demolished that batting lineup then they went and beat RCB by chasing down a big target 100 from Joss Butler they kind of just doing every part of the game very very well at the moment and they're winning in lots of different ways so I think they very much deserve to be up here you know there's still two unbeaten teams but I guess my point for for them maybe before we talk a little bit about uh, some of the positives and maybe that Butler 100 because I think that was that's worth a little bit of a chat on is is are there any actual weaknesses in this side because you know I know you said it's early on but they feel like they are marching towards this you know, maybe not a title, but certainly towards those playoffs. And they're a side who, two years ago, they performed very, very well. Last season, it seemed like they were kind of just in cruise mode and then never really got out of, you know, second gear until, you know, until it was too late and it was and it all ticked away. But this year, they are just firing on all cylinders. Yeah, look, look, I think coming off the back of the last Power Rankings, which we released um, only as an audio podcast, so if you do want to go and listen to that, uh, we had a few technical issues on the night, but uh, it's out on the podcast feed. We talked about whether or not there are any question marks at the top of the order, particularly yeah. with Joss Butler. Um, I, I'd like to just place on record, I, <laughs> I, I think I may have said something along the lines of form is temporary and class is permanent and he would come good. Um, and obviously has done during, well, well the, done. Yeah, during the course of the, the week. But to answer your question look I don't think there are there are weaknesses we, you know we've got um, the emergence I think of um, yes yeah, some bowling options that you know we, we maybe didn't know a massive amount about Nandre Berger coming into the tournament mm. we talked about Trent Bont Trent Bolt's quality as a power play bowler and then clearly they've got you know the spin of Ashwin and, and, and Charhal as well so uh, there isn't a weakness at the moment um, particularly because now all of their top order um, with the exception probably uh, of, of Jaiswell mm. um, and you know who's going to bet against him going big in the next game so um, they've got two or three guys that have now found a, a little bit of um, a little bit of form still early days and, and like you say Lip, really big game for them um, um, or so really big games coming up over the course of the next uh, the next week or so. But yeah, no weaknesses for me, and I'm uh, yeah I'm quite happy with the money I've got on them. <laughs> no, I mean, look, they have done a good job in almost every game that they've played and every facet they've played, going along with having good players who are executing. Uh, they've got experienced players: mm. Trent Bolt, Ravi Ashwin, mm. Joss Butler, Sanju Sampson, Chahal. Chahal. These are experienced, experienced players. Like just in the in the chase where they were chasing against um, RCB, mm. they're chasing a big score. Other teams we've seen over the last you know three weeks have faltered when they're chasing big totals, and they've just fallen apart. But these two lost Joss well early. 
Butler, Sanju Sampson were able to just dig it in, dig mm-hmm. it in, and then just just launch through the middle. And mm. it was a really, really mature chase that they they cantered home in the end. Yeah, well, but um, Butler, I mean, picking up on that, Butler was fourteen or fourteen balls, and then he basically. He just took down Dagar in that mm. over, and then suddenly they were ahead of the run rate, and you know it was all it was all on. Can I just pick up on your point about there not being a weakness in this side? You have a look at their bowlers; they've used six bowlers so far this season. None of them have an economy rate above eight. Well, eight point eight is their worst economy rate. And wow. That's Nandre Berger, who's also got a terrific mm. strike rate. So, that's if you have a look at like their fifth bowling option, is going for no more than eights, and even though Ravi Ashwin is averaging a hundred and twenty so <laughs> far. Um, Because he's only got one wicket, but he's only going at eight runs and over. So Mm. no matter where you look, you're not getting the 10, 12, 15 runs and over from the fourth or fifth bowling options that other teams have been feasting on in the tournament. Are are we are we giving them too much credit? They're saying that they've beaten the I'm going to call them the Deccan Chargers, the Delhi Capitals, uh, Mumbai Indians, and RCB as three of the four that they have beaten. Who we've got down the bottom. We talked about this last week. Like mm. some of you boys had them at the top of your your picks for for the for the tournament. Mm. So I, I I don't think so. I, I think that at the end of the day they're four from four from four. Um, yes, that you know they've beaten some teams that are down the bottom of the table. But you know I think we we said we thought RCB would go pretty well, didn't we, throughout the course of the, yeah, the, the it's tournament? Not going so well so far. So yes, yeah, so look, absolutely, they're they're, they're worth it. At the, you know, to, to borrow from L'Oreal, they're worth it at the moment. Uh, let's <laughs> see if they. They, they still, they still are when they get the conditioner on. I, and I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that that um, why I don't feel that way is because of uh, the way that we talked about at the start. That they're just winning yeah. in lots of different ways, and they're doing it with their ball, with the ball, with the bat. Yeah, I, I just feel that that's that's why they're worth being up there at the top at the moment. And I think on you know weaknesses. Probably maybe more than anyone, I feel like the impact player rule really helps them mm. because they don't have a genuine all rounder unless you want to, you know, Ravi Ashwin, I guess. Bait sometimes five, bit, yeah. five, you know, so yeah. maybe that's being a bit unfair to him. But in the sense that, you know, some of the other teams do where they're guaranteed to bowl four overs and bat, you know, in the top four or five every week, every game, I think that, you know, for Rajasthan, the impact player rule basically allows them to have six bowling options and six, you know, six, six genuine genuine, batters, genuine yeah. batters in every game. So that's a, a massive help. Mm. Who's number two? Well, yeah, probably no surprise to anyone that number two so far is, is KKR, the only other unbeaten team in this side. They have had one game since the last power mm. rankings and, uh, you know, absolutely blitz DC for, for 270 so yeah, fully deserve their their spot on these these dizzy heights. I think it is a massive game for them tonight against CSK for some kind of weird sort of schedule that they've only played three games so far. It'll obviously turn around at some point. And I, I guess where I want to start with this because you know you guys can after this question feel free to to go nuts and and wax lyrical about their batting lineup because it has been absolutely astonishing. But I still have concerns about this bowling attack. I just don't feel like. The bowling attack of Stark, Aurora, Hashit Rana, Dre Russ, Venki Aya, Nareen, Chakravati, you know, all of those names, that doesn't feel like a title winning bowling attack to me. Is is that an unfair statement? No, I don't I don't think that's an unfair statement at all. Uh, but I think that you have players there that can win matches by themselves. The likes of Dre Russ, uh, even Chakravati's had a little bit of form in that 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 last match there against uh, Delhi. Yes, they might not be as good as, as, as some of the other attacks that we've seen around the league, but they can score anything. Yeah. I feel like they could be the first team to score 300 if they get a chance. I actually think this bowling attack has more upside than they have shown so far in this tournament. Other than Noreen, whose economy rate here is, is sort of seven and a bit. You know, you have a look at Dre Russ is going for nine. Stark is going for tens or ele- he's going for 11s and averaging 62. Like he's got nowhere to go but up in this tournament. Mm. So as yeah. good as they've played, their, their, their best bowler has a lot of room left to improve as far as his on-field performances go. And I think he, they will go as far in the playoffs and in the finals as as those two big-name big, big name players, Russell and, and Stark, can take them. Yeah, look, I think it's probably time to announce my retirement from the pod, isn't it, really? <laughs> uh, KKR and, and, and the Royals at the top of the table. It might not get better than this for, for, for me. So, um, I, I, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I, you know, I, I don't have um, too many concerns about this. I think... They've got a big name player in Mitchell Stark who, you know, we, we talked about whether or not 
um, the thumbnail for last week's party for it to come out on video was going to be should they drop Stark? Um, and look, he came to the party, um, you know, this 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 week. Um, I think they've obviously used the impact player well to get, uh, they'd have Aurora in. Um, yeah, he looked the, good, I thought. Yeah, bit the, of energy. Yeah, uh, a bit, bit of energy, bit of, yeah, a bit of nip. Um, I, I think whether or not um, they might struggle if someone goes around the park after they've used an impact player, it's that kind of sixth yeah. or seventh bowler option. Um, but, you know, that they have from a batting perspective, I think, um, yeah, come out and done what we, we, we talked about them doing, which was that they they had a real middle order powerhouse with Rinku Singh, with Andre Russell, um, with the Ayers. But what they've probably got that we maybe didn't expect is, um, is you know, Sunil Noreen at the top of the order. Mm. Um, and then we talked a little about Phil Salt as well, and he's got them off to mm. a couple of, couple mm. of flyers. So th- they've got batting firing throughout um, th- throughout the course of the tournament so far and I'm sure we're going to talk about it but it, it's been a feast of batting largely so far mm-hmm. you know mm. we've got three or four scores over 240 big um, big scores yeah some big scores that, that pitch in particular yeah. uh, was very uh, not normally of Indian characteristics there was a lot of bounce mm. I think Stark really liked it it was a pitch where he could actually get the ball coming through and the team that Old second got the benefit of seeing how that what the team bowling first did wrong, and uh, Delhi did plenty wrong, which I'm sure we'll talk about later mm. on in the in the pod. I think if there is a weakness in this KKR team, it is in that bowling depth. Mm. If there is an injury to one of those key bowlers, there's not a lot coming along behind them of repute. There are guys who are going to take an opportunity and, and maybe step up, but if Stark gets injured, if Stark goes down for a, a week or two, who's going to come in and fill those? big boots that admittedly aren't and performing great right now. Yeah. It could, be, could be you and I, right? But, um, you know, if, if he goes down or if there is an injury in that bowling stocks, that's when I think it's going to become a, a concern for KKR. They need almost more than any other side that's a top four contender to maintain health throughout the course of this of this IPL. Yeah. How good was the betting, though? Noreen, uh, Dre Ross, uh, I've got down here, he who must not be named, which is uh, Ankush Raghuvanshi, who no, none of the commentators wanted to ever go at that. <laughs> um, 18-year-old from Mumbai, looked yeah, very, very, very great, good. Yeah. Um, and uh, Rinku as well at the end. Like th- These guys could chase anything, no matter what. Their bowling's a weakness, but they could chase anything, they could set anything. Yeah. I, I said to Baldy, I mean, Baldy and I uh, reviewed this game earlier in the week, you know, midweek, just after it happened. And I, I, I said to him that, I thought Rinku, you know, Rinku's hardly done anything in this mm. tournament. He's batting down at seven because mm. they're just their batting is just going so so well. It's mm. it's amazing. I thought Rinku was primed for a big season as someone who was going to come in and uh, you know score loads and loads of runs and force his way maybe into that Indian T Twenty World Cup squad. But he's not even getting a chance at the moment. Yeah, and look, we'll talk about someone else later. We put the icing on the cake of an innings really, uh, really, really well. But yeah, that was that was really good to watch. So just looking forward for them, they've got CSK, LSG, and the Rajasthan Royals. The next three games. What, what will you give a pass mark to? Two out of three? Mm. Yeah, I think two out of three. And I think to your point, Lippy, you know, you said it's a big game from tonight. I, I actually, I think it's a bigger game for CSK. Yeah, no, um, I agree. So, you know, I think that they've almost got, not one they can lose, but then they're three and one um, out of four games. So whereas there's a number of teams now already with a couple of losses or more on, on their ledger. So, uh, yeah, I, I think coming out of the gates this strong for them I think will give them yeah give them a massive amount of confidence and, and yeah if they go two and one it's yeah well look even if they go one and two your yeah. point your point you just made that they've gone three and oh so far it gives them a bit of that wiggle yeah. room right they go one and two they're still four and two for the, the tournament and they're still probably by that stage looking pretty decent in the tournament what it will do though is if they lose to CSK and LSG that gives the teams behind them a leg up on the yes. table as well they'll fall back into that congested what yeah. it was now a congested pack so you know, we talk we talk about it all the time, but this this two game slate coming up, they can distance themselves from the the sides that are you know at the moment contending to be three and four on the table. We will come on to to number three, and I think we're going to be um, on the table again, aren't we? With Baldy's uh, not quite the uh, not not just regular giants, just not yeah, regular like, giants. They're like now super giants, yeah. And and look, you know, I I probably still remain slightly skeptical about about them Baldy and I had a little bit of a chat about that again in midweek but you know they've had convincing wins this week against RCB and against uh, and Gujarat 
you know, first it was my aunt Gadav who did it against RCB. You know, he'll be living in Cameron Green's memory for for a long, long time after that delivery. But you know, he gets a side strain last night against GT, which, which isn't ideal. We, we'll see how how long that keeps him out for. But mm. you know, up steps Yash Takur, takes five for Krunal Pandi has been really good. Yeah. Bishnoi has been good. Their, their key batters are now starting to to find some form with uh, with Quentin de Kock getting runs and Marcus Stoinis, who I actually thought you know. To be fair to him, I I hadn't I don't uh, think of him as a responsible batter, you know. I think of him as someone who comes in and and sort of you know maybe adds the icing on the cake as you touched on before. But he's been given a lot of responsibility in this LSG side, you know, batting four or five up there, and he took it yesterday. I think you know maybe we start there, Baldy. I I was super impressed with what he did because. It was an innings where they had to rebuild, and, and he did an excellent job of that. Yeah, it's un- not uncharacteristic from him, but it's not been in keeping with the run of form that we've seen from him for the last 12, 18 months, maybe even two years, mm. it, it, to be fair. He showed a lot of poise, a lot of character, and I think that's something that augurs well both for LSG going forward, but also thinking about you know selfishly the Australia World Cup campaign. They're going to need a guy like that to be... To be not selfish in the middle order, but but poised and responsible because they've got a whole bunch of big hitters around them and they need someone to you know hold that together at the number four spot. If he's going to go and do that consistently for LSG over the course of the IPL, he could play himself into the number four spot and guys bet around him in that Australian order. So for him, it's all to play for at the moment and he's putting his team on the front foot, probably overachieving, I think, at this point in the season, if we think about it really. I, I like the fact he's at four. I said it last week. Um, you know, I like the way he bats. He looks like the Hulk. Everyone thinks he must go out there and smash it. Uh, but he can bat well. We've seen it firsthand, uh, him, you know, scoring scoring a lot of runs uh, when he's batting um, with a bit of maturity. We've seen with some teams that they've struggled to set scores or know what a good score is. Mm. These guys, K.O. Rahul and, and Stornis, especially in the last game, were able to judge that pitch really well mm-hmm. and it looked like they might have left some runs out there but mm. they didn't they, they actually batted really well to the conditions I really liked um, seeing Stoinis score some runs as well. that was my main thing to take, take away from that game and the other one I've got a great line here that Padigal's bingo card of scores under 10 is looking <laughs> pretty full after four games he, yeah, yeah he's he's struggling isn't he the brilliant run out in the RCP game though to be fair got faff mm-hmm. Uh, and their fielding, yeah, their fielding was has been good. Puran took an excellent catch yeah. uh, in that RCB game as, as well. Where are you at on them, though, Binks? Because, yeah, I said before, I sort of remain a bit unconvinced about them, even though they are also a team that is kind of putting strong performances together in all three facets of the game. Yeah, look, it's, it's, it sounds strange to say it when you kind of look at the bowling card from the, the last game. Obviously, we talked about like, Yash Thakov, Pfeiffer and Krenal. Uh, three wickets but I, I think batting uh, is going to be their continued strength because I think Padakal will come right um, you know he, he, he's had a little bit of a lean shot and obviously that you know England test series um, you know he's, he's not going to look too fondly on that but I think that you know they've got um, you know four or five quality players there Nicholas Poran's been really I, I think good throughout the course Very of the strong, tournament yeah. uh, mm-hmm. so far as well and I think Stoinis brings yeah probably just a, a, a deal of maturity um, it's played obviously a lot of one day international cricket as well as um, the T20 stuff and I think that, that that's a skill that you bring into T20 cricket is your ability to know how to take a game really really deep and, and, and that you've got a little bit more time and if you can translate that from 50 into 20 over cricket which I think is what they did in the last game really really well they knew what you know knew what target they needed to, to kind of set and in the end one quite comfortably so I think batting wise but I, I just don't see them being there at the back end of the tournament when we're going to talk about some of the other teams um, that, are, that, that you know we've already talked about um, and, and look I, you know, I, I think there's a chance that KKR and, and Rajasthan fade away a little bit, but I'll bask in that glow for a minute. But we're going to talk about some teams that I think are going to have a bit of a charge, and I, and I think we'll see um, the not quite regular giants sort of, uh, yeah, probably down the table would would be my view later in the tournament. Mayank Yadav's injury, what do you think that means for LSG? Uh, look, I think going into the back end of the tournament, the likes of Krunal Pandya and, and Bush, Bishnoi are going to come into it a lot more. We're mm. seeing the, the pitches are definitely starting to slow down. But that is disappointing, the the out of injury. And 
I think it's because the tournament's so s- small or a small window. Yeah, you know, it might be out for a while. Yeah, look, I mean, they that they, they this talk that I've heard has been you know playing it down that it's very it was you know side strain precautionary. I mean, he finished the over. He was still bowling 140, which is not the 156 k's an hour. Still that quick was, enough, but yeah, still quick enough for for someone like me. So, you know. Uh, I think it obviously hurts them, but you know, it it gave Yash Takura an opportunity to to take five wickets. So, you know, maybe maybe there is the depth there. I, I think your point around the spinners is is been the most impressive part for me because yeah, if Krenal's going to contribute like he's been doing, Bishnoi I really like. I've you know like for a, a little while now, and Siddharth's been been uh, coming in, opened the bowling the other day. I thought he did a, an excellent job actually uh, to uh, Coley particularly in that RC get, RCB game. He's, you know, I guess he's known more for skidding it on, swinging it through the air, but he slowed one up to Coley. Coley came down the wicket, you know, looped it up to, to point. So, look, if they can contribute with their spinners, then maybe they can kind of, you know, get past the, the Yadav injury for a little bit and then, you know, rebuild again when he comes back. And, and Stoinis has only bowled one over in this whole tournament, right? He's only he's only bowled a single over. So yeah. there's plenty of there's plenty of Stoinis in the tank if they want to use it. And he's he, bowled a lot for Australia lately, yeah. hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. He, he has. Was, he's bowled he was, a lot of early overs. He yeah. was subbed out in the last game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, there's plenty yeah. of untapped potential there. Awesome. So we're going to, I guess, head into that, you know, really congested part of the table mm. now. Um, teams are around about 50-50 or lower in terms of their records. Now, I do just want to point out, listeners and viewers, please, um, this is the Lipshaw Index. <laughs> so if you disagree with this next um, this next piece on the power rankings, um, then, yeah, it, it's direct your queries to, uh, to Mr. <laughs> Lipshaw, not the podcast. Um, but, Lippy, I think you've got the Sunrisers at four, haven't you, when Chen I are four on the, the table, albeit only by net net run rate at this stage yeah and look i you know totally agree there's a bunch of teams here that i think you could throw a blanket over and and, you know you could decide on on where you want them based on your own personal opinion about where they stand but i think uh i tried to think about it okay where have they gone in the last week and look sunrisers beat csk that's that's the only game they've had this week they beat csk and i actually think it was largely down to their bowling which has been you know one of the weaker parts of their game i think so far in this tournament Mm. but they really really uh, I, th- I was really encouraged by what they did because they figured out that pitch that they were playing on. They they realised that you know we need to bowl lots of slow balls, lots of cutters, and they made it really difficult for for CSK. Even when Dubey got in, that was probably the key moment of that game. It could have gone either way. Dubey was hitting it to all parts, but Cummins bowls that ball gets Dubey and then suddenly the likes of Natarajan, I thought well, Nadkat bowled really, really well, mm. you know, digging it in and getting those, uh, making it difficult for, for CSK to score. You know, the back end of that innings, I think they only conceded maybe 36 or something, 38 for one or something off the last five overs, which is normally go time. And it just didn't happen because of the way the Sunrisers put that that back end of that bowling innings together, which is really, really encouraging for them. So mm. I think the question now is, they're two and two. Can they can they find consistency? Because they've just been so up and down in terms of their batting and bowling so far this tournament. Yeah, I just going on that uh, when you're talking about Dubey being out there. That was the only time they looked out of control. That mm. bowling lineup. We talked last week about Pat Cummins, uh, you know, coming in at the later stage of the innings. He bowled in the power play this game. They looked much more controlled, yeah. mm. uh, much more solid. I'm unsure about this tactic of left arm spin bowling the first over. A lot of teams seem to be doing that at the moment. I yeah, don't know yeah. if there's some it's kind a bit of theory. 1992 World Cup, yeah, isn't it? I don't know what's going on at the moment, but uh, yeah. And the other one uh, there was Abhishek, Sh- Abhishek Sharma. He was very, very good in that um, 37 off 12 that he got. There's just so much talent there in India, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, but. And Adam Markram is the other one I've got here. I thought it was a great chase for him. When we see a lot of batsmen go out there, even though a game's under control, still try to smack it out of the ground. Mm. He didn't do that. He batted calmly 50 off 35 and guided them pretty much home. Uh, I think that they can do this on a consistent level. The bowling, I think they just bowled the ball rather than trying to think about who they were playing, the matchups that they were bowling, and that they looked very good. And the bat, you know, the batters got them home in the end against a low score. Yeah, look, seven or eight bowling options for them, which I think, you know, is always going to be useful. And yeah, look, sometimes I think that over a spin early on is going to come off and other times it won't. But mm. the reality is sometimes, you know, your over of Pat Cummins will come off and sometimes it won't. So um, I, I think, it, yeah, it's worth a, yeah, worth it, worth a try. And yeah, I agree with Raj really on Aidan Markham. We talked last week about whether or not 
you might look to switch him and Klaassen because of Klaassen's form and, mm. um, you know, ability. But yeah, his innings um, to kind of really all but ice this, you know, this game, you, you know, he got out with, you know, uh, 30 or so runs to go. Um, but, the, you know, the game is pretty much done yeah, uh, yeah. by them. Really, really good pacing of that. Uh, pacing of that innings and look we'll talk about pacing of innings and how many runs you should score if you you know if you face um, a certain number of balls a little bit later on but I think he's got it dead right throughout the course of this tournament um, so far so yeah they they, they look um, pretty good yeah well I think your, your point about Abhishek Sharma I mean he's a he's a player I've enjoyed for a couple of years now I think like he's such a clean hitter of the ball the way he was striking uh, in this game I mean is a, a perfect example for it but I think a lot of sides now are looking at that top of the order and going one of our players has to just go and make you know make the most of the power play I mean for for Sunrises it's been Travis Head so far has been the one who's basically just looked to try and hit every single ball for for, for a boundary you look at I mean even some the way CSK is trying to use Rutchen, uh, you know there are, there are Sunil Noreen for um, for KKR. It seems like that's the strategy that you want one of your guys to just really, really go for it in that power play. And then, you know, the rest of them can obviously bat around it. And Markram did a, a, a mm. wonderful job there. Before before we kind of finish on the sunrises, I'm keen. Uh, we, the news came sing out. Sing the song. Well, I, I'd love to sing the song, but maybe we'll save that to, to when they win the tournament. But I, I actually don't even know if that song's still still uh, with the Sunrises now. It was, oh, yeah. Well, Kane wrote it, I'm pretty sure. So you know, now that Kane's uh, now that Kane's not those there, excuses he was a big still. part of that. Uh, Keep getting those excuses. He was a big part then. of that song. But anyway, we're we're digressing from my question. The news came out that Hasaranga is now out of the the IPL. You know, uh, his injury just is not going away. needs to needs to get some rest there. It kind of got me thinking on. I mean, we've we've had a lot of chat about them. About they've got uh, too many quality overseas players already that they can't. I mean, too many is it not the right words? Mm. But you know, they've got the four. They've got they've, they've, they've got seven others mm. that they can't fit into the side with the likes of Phillips and, and things on the bench. Marco Janssen, Faruqi are the other three, but. Is there, a, is there a type of player that you'd be looking for to replace Hasaranga? Because I think that uh, they should be a side, personally, that should go out and actually... Some of these sides, for some reason, are not replacing some of these guys that are out for the tournament or out for extended periods. I do think the Sunrisers should be looking at replacing Hasaranga and trying to get maybe a different look. But I'm keen to get your thoughts on, on who you might try and target. I didn't give this much thought, but I was thinking to myself it's got to be a like for like replacement right because you talk about those guys that are on the bench you've got Phillips who's an all-rounder can bowl can bowl some 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 spin um you've got lots of batting options you've got Pat Cummins to bowl seam you've got Travis Head in the side you've got Marco Janssen sitting on the bench who's a left arm seamer so you've got lots of different looks there but they're missing a gun strike spinner I don't know where you find one of those that isn't already in an IPL mm. side, mm. but that's really the thing that they're missing at the it's, moment. It's a local though. You're looking at, or you're looking for an overseas. Well, player? if they get an overseas, he's going to still be on the. He's going to be in the player rotation, right? Mm. But it's more if they get a gun overseas spinner, is that someone that you can throw in there as a, a horses for courses, a, 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 a conditions type mm. matchup play, rather than having them play every game? Because that's that's the flexibility that they currently don't have at the moment. I, I don't know who's on the on the bench I, I didn't get enough time to to do much research on that today because i was doing deep dives yeah. so <laughs> so what i what i remember from the preview is talking about um Klaassen mm. and how him being pretty much the only keeper in the squad uh limiting their options there a little bit uh I think ideally, as the pitches start to slow up, you're going to miss someone like Hasaranga, a spinner mm. through the middle overs. Uh, that That's something that I would be looking to replace, whether that's a local player or an overseas player. Mm. But then you're looking at who do you drop out of the side. Know. You know, you don't want to drop Travis Head. You don't want to drop Aidan Markram. You can't drop Pat Cummins. You don't can't want to drop Carson if he's scoring runs, and he is scoring runs. Mm. But uh, I definitely think you need someone to spin through that middle period. They've got some pretty good seamers with uh, Natarajan as well, bowling well at the death. Yeah. Um, so yeah, spinner for me. Yeah, um, and I, look, I, I, I again uh, lack of inherent lack of research, but I've just typed into my iPad and Baldy's he's not sort of you know vehemently agreed with me but I've pulled up Adil Rashid who was released that's by the Sunrisers last year that's who I'd consider um, um, and look I don't know whether that's his ongoing shoulder injury but a guy who was played in the, t the SA T20 yeah, and stuff he's, and he, he's and he was ranked number one in T20 international rankings as recently as 
uh, back end of 2023. So, um, yeah, uh, th- yeah, but they, they let him go. M- maybe maybe he's not a good egg. Maybe 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 you know co-wrote the song and he was there were some <laughs> arguments <laughs> arguments going on there. Just before we move off Sunrisers, their next four games are Punjab, RCB, Delhi, and RCB. Yeah, big chance. Big, big big chance to go on a run. Like if they're going to if they're going to push for the finals, that's the run that they need to go three and one and put some pressure on those other top four sides because they're all winnable games. I mean, they've got RCB twice. Let's see what they they do with their form over the next week or so, um, and if they can pull finger and, and get their season back on track. But at the moment, for the Sunrisers, if they're going to play finals, they need to go three and one in that next slate of four games and give themselves a real chance. Absolutely. The next team on my list at, at five here is I, I do have the Punjab Kings and, and again, look, this is this is another side who I don't feel especially confident about being there at the, the business end of the season. But look, since the last power rankings, they've now made it to two and two. They've beaten uh, Gujarat Titans. I still quite don't quite know how they won that game. Gujarat were just in it seemed in total total control of that match. You know, uh, Mohit gets Sikandar Raza and it's 111 for five and, you know, in the 13th over, Shashank Singh comes in and just turns the game around and, and wins it for them. And, uh, you know, I, th- I mean, there's been, I'm not the first person to make this joke, but, you know, it seemed like at the auction, uh, if anyone can remember back that far, the people were saying that uh, CSK or Punjab Kings, uh, were unsure that they'd bought the right Shashank King Singh <laughs> during the, during the auction. Well, yeah, he, it certainly seems like he's paid off now. I think to go on your point about uh, the you know the next few matches, they have four home games coming up right after this. They have Sunrisers, Rajasthan, Mumbai, and Gujarat. And you know they now I think in their own you know if, in their own dressing room will think exactly what you just said that this is our chance basically to go you know even if we go two and two in these next four games we're going to give ourselves a very good opportunity to to you know when we leave Mulanpur that we'll be in a situation where we're fighting for a semi-final spot it, it's interesting you say that because you look at the names of the teams on paper you put their current season form out of the window and you look at that slate of games and think Punjab are going to lose all four, the, all four of those games on paper. Just if you had a look at the squads at the end of the auction and we and we sort of went around the table in the preview and we went, how strong is this side? They, they on paper, shouldn't win any of those games. The fact that we're talking about them winning one, maybe two, maybe even three, is a huge plus for them in, the, in terms of the way that they've played their cricket this season. They've been a surprise packet for, I think, many, many people. Maybe not for Adam, but certainly for me. Um, the way that they've played and gone about their cricket has been really impressive. And I think they've overachieved, overachieved already to get to where they are now. Yeah, I think it's one of those cricketing cliches or sporting cliches. It, you know, the sum of their parts. And um, when you kind of look down the guys that have made a contribution so far, and obviously we're talking about a team that's 50 50 in terms of their record, right? So mm. let's not, you know, let's not get the engraver on the trophy just yet. But they've, you know, Shikha Darwin has, has contributed, Johnny Bairstow has contributed, uh, Sam Curran has contributed, Shashank has contributed, Just as Sharma has contributed, all the way down their card. They've, they've had, you know, when you look at the averages, you kind of go, there's a guy and then you have to go a little bit, you know, a lot further down. Mm. They've not got three, four, five players that are stringing together performances and, and no one else. Everybody has, has kind of put up a performance at some point. A little bit like, I guess going back, why are you laughing? <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm getting ready for real talk. That's all. <laughs> okay. A, a little bit like you, you, when you kind of look at Rajasthan back in the inaugural tournament and okay, they had one superstar, but the sum of their parts was that, was that they all contributed over the course of the season. And I think you could see that from them. I don't think you will. Um, but, you know, this, this is the power rankings. We're trying to talk at why teams might go well and why they might not go well. That's why they are going well so far, in, in my view. But, yeah, they'll be down the bottom at the end of the tournament. Yeah, I, I think the challenge is that um, you're right and that a lot of different people are contributing. But it, the problem is that they're only getting kind of one contribution and then, like, someone goes quiet for two or three games. and then. Yeah. But so, you, you know, maybe if they can start putting two or three of those guys start putting putting performances in the same game, then they become a much more formidable, uh, much more formidable lineup. Because, I mean, I look at that bowling attack and think it's actually pretty decent. Yeah. You know, Rabada and, and Ashdeep Singh, the batting lineup I look at and just go, you know, this could easily crumble. And uh, yeah, they're just not a side that inspires me with any confidence. Yeah, I don't know. I disagree. I think we're, we're here talking about how they've overachieved 
they've gone at 500. This is not going to get them anywhere near the playoffs. Um, they are. Li- oh, I'm going to use the word likely, but that's probably a bit harsh. They're likely not to win another game this tournament for the rest of the tournament. <laughs> they've got they've got the Sunrisers, Rajasthan, Mumbai, and Gujarat next four games. They're not the favourite in any of those games. Um, they're not going to be the favourite in, in, on any of the bookies. Their bowling, it looks at pedestrian at times, and that's saying something with Rabada in the lineup. Mm. I think Sam Curran, Ashdeep Singh, really bowling along the wicket at the moment. Any wicket that is decent for batting, they're going to get postage miles returning the balls from where they're going to end up in the stadium. With the chase, that, that chase against... Um, the Gujarat. the Gujarat Titans there. They shouldn't have won that game. No way. Shikhar Dawan, Bairstow, Curran didn't really contribute at all to that chase. Shashank, Prabram Singh and uh, Ashutosh, who was I haven't heard of before, came in as the impact player. Was they were dropped, incredible. Was dropped yeah. very was dropped, early on, was on three dropped, or something, yeah. Was dropped very early, but we, you, you're telling me these guys are going to be consistent all throughout the tournament, bringing them home? I, I just I just don't see it. That they're not, but you know, there's no room in the school book for the story, and you can tell them I'm with money on Mumbai Indians, can't you? <laughs> I, 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 I agree. I, you know, I agree with you. I don't think that this is a side that's uh, that that's that's destined for the playoffs. So, I, you know, I, I, I've said that all along. I think even in the in the preview, I thought they were they were going to be disappointing. I think the the one encouraging thing, I, you know, we said it last week that they've been in every game. Mm. They've been in every game, and they have, you know. When you're in every game, they've found a way to win two of those games. And if they can continue that, then they're going to put themselves in an opportunity. Yeah, I still think they'll be doing well to be, you know, at that eight game mark. And be if they're 50 50, then, then they'll think, okay, we can kind of sneak in. But yeah, I, I do really, I do really admire that chase, though. Like I watched a lot of that game, especially that chase, and they just didn't go away. Mm. They were always, even though they kept losing wickets, they were always pushing Gujarat, and they actually got it in the end. But before, uh, I know this is not the right forum, but before we move on, can we give Harpreet Bra? A, he's been a, really good. A, a bit of a, he's bowled thirteen overs, only gone for for seventy four runs so far in the tournament. Economy rate five point six. In, in absolutely a, the forum. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, I thought I just didn't want to know if, if we're giving too much individual Don't do, 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 do a phone in on a gardening oh, okay. show. But, uh, <laughs> no, he's been really good. He's been good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Re- really economical. And, and you know, team, like you say, teams have been going air miles. So far, he hasn't. His, some of his teammates have. There Excellent. you go. So, um, fourth on the table, but sixth in the Lipshaw Index. CSK. Well, look. You know they've lost two in a row now. The, since the last uh, since the last power rankings, they they have a loss to the Sunrisers, which we talked about before. And and, and as much as I like the side, I, I have to bump them down. You know they've had a couple of failures from from Russian now, and and that's really impacting their batting and how it's kind of going and how it's set up. That, as I said before, it, it feels like they're really designed for certain players to be the power hitters in their lineup, and everyone else to sort of uh, you know judge judge their way through whether they need to throw MS Dhoni up to the top of the order like we talked about last week maybe that's the, that's the answer but look you know for Rutchen I guess that it seems like not that teams have figured him out but they've, they're certainly not bowling uh, you know his big power zone is through the leg side kind of that pull the, the flick off his legs and teams are, are certainly trying to keep it further away from him uh, in those early stages now and that's that's made it tricky I think you know I think he'll adjust and, and things will change but I think it's you know, it, it's actually the bowling that I'm more concerned about because there was no Putty Rana in that game, no no Mr. Fuzza because of uh, you know he's got he's been back in Bangladesh to sort out his visa for for T20 World Cup stuff. Putty Rana had a slight injury. I actually read. Uh, that he's back bowling now, so yeah. maybe it won't be that long. Mr. Mustafa is, is back on the plane, so maybe again it won't be that long. But in a tournament like this where these teams are all just kind of beating each other, I worry that if these two guys are out for, you know, if they miss two games, that the depth of that CSK bowling attack suddenly just doesn't look that strong. And with Conway sitting on the bench, you know, injured, and then the guys that they can come in to replace them, they don't really have, you know, like-for-like like replacements for those seamers. And, and yeah, I, I just think that's a, a big problem that they're going to have to worry about. So I, I guess last week you you know you asked the question: Do they have a bad day in the performance they had against uh, Delhi. The Delhi? I'm going to stick with I think that they had a bad day against the Sunrisers. I think they left a few, but the other way they left a few runs out there on the on the field. You know I, I mentioned before that a few teams 
it's hard to know what what's a good score setting sometimes just because of how many runs have been scored. I just looked through the scorecard. Guy Quad, 26 off 21. Rahane, 35 off 30. Jadeja, 31 off 23. Yeah. I just feel like they left a little bit out there. And then when you've got Dhoni down at number seven, which, as you mentioned, it feels like a mistake. When Moe Nali at eight. Yeah, and Moe yeah. Nali at eight. It just feels like they left a few runs out there. Combined with Abhishek Sharma coming out with his 37 off 12, it made it look completely, completely pedestrian, that chase that they had. I think it was just a... A set of circumstances that didn't work. I still have them in the top four in my power ranking. I know the Lipshire index doesn't, but um, I think I think that they they're going all right. I think they've had two bad games. Can we just dive into their spin stew? Thick Shana averaging sixty three at the moment. Ravi Jadeja, Ravindra Jadeja averaging one hundred and nine at the moment. So not getting a lot of wickets from their spin, no. but their economy rates both under eight. So yeah. up up and down the, this lineup, no one's going for more than nine and a bit. Mm. So their economy overall, if you look at the big picture, is pretty good up and down the board. So from a depth perspective, there is a bit of depth there in terms of you know their top six, seven bowlers all have got reasonable economy. But they're, if they're not going to get wickets from Mustafa Zur, then they're going to have to get more penetration from their gun spinners yeah. if they're going to be bowling well, J- side Jadeja out. Jadeja got 20 wickets last year, you know, 20 wickets last year, and that's a that's a big, you know, big thing. If he's not, if he's going to go back to being a, an economical bowler, he's sort yeah. of had very, you know, varying years where he'll be, uh, well, I guess it's, that's kind of how it goes. Let's see, we see it in someone like Rashid Khan, who goes, sometimes he'll get tons of wickets and sometimes he'll have spells where he's just going economically. Mm. And, and uh, But yeah, if they're not getting that from those got bowlers up front, and that, that's sort of what I'm worried about. You know, you, you look at these the rest of their their bowlers it's Chahar it's you know Mukesh Chowdhury Dish Pandey and you know they're, they're going you know some of those guys are going the distance as well and if you don't have Patirana like if you think about last year their campaign Patirana was they had Patirana Thikshana were super fit all you know most of last year and really contributed Patirana was was huge for them so if these guys are out for a significant amount of time I just feel like that depth is, is a big concern yeah, but balance probably with the batting is is the thing that I, I picked up on. I thought I was really really pleased to see Mo and Ali get a, a, a run out in this game and quite well, bowled think. bowled really well. But yeah. I think when you've got Rahane coming in at three, and obviously he, he's had a couple of contributions out of forty and a thirty. Mm. His forty was at one hundred and fifty. The thirty we already talked about was probably the wrong pace innings, and and to Raj's point, probably meant they left maybe fifteen twenty runs out there, which would have been. Uh, pretty impactful in this last game but they've also got Mo and Ali and MS Stoney who and please don't don't write in <laughs> I'm not saying that Mo and Ali is a, a, as good a player as MS Stoney down the order but they are both doing a similar thing you know Mo and Ali if he's going to bat at seven or eight it's to come in and face six balls and try and clear the rope every ball just like Doney mm. one of those two I think has got to go up the order to provide that impetus at three or four. Well, um, Moyne's done a great job batting up the order. And he's done it, yeah. And he's yeah. done a great yeah. job batting up the order. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, Rahane did that. Rahane, to be fair to Rahane, he did do that last year. That was his role last yeah. year and, and, and smashed it all over the park. Yeah. I, th- I actually think the one that is holding their li- batting lineup at the moment is Guy Quad because mm. Guy Quad's going at a very slow rate. With uh, I've seen yeah. stats out there, you know, I think maybe he's last or you know second to last in terms of first 10 balls that he's facing you know the strike rate there and I think as to my point it was fine when Rachin Ravindra was smashing it to all parts getting off yeah. to a flying start if that doesn't happen with all those guys in the batting lineup that you've talked about the Dhoni and and Moeen Ali the guys that are lower down the order there's no like there's no value in having them there if you're not prepared to risk losing wickets I think like we said it earlier in the show then that last five overs against Sunrise is 38 for one, you know? Yeah. Like you'd you'd prefer, I mean, it kind of sounds silly, but you'd almost prefer to be like 38 for three because you're actually having a bigger crack. And to be fair, they had Daryl Mitchell out there and he was straight, like, I think Sunrise has bowled well, but yeah, I think they kind of need to figure out the pace that they're going. I'd like to give out a hat, a turquoise hat. Turquoise. It's uh, the Raj Reddy Award for the most aesthetically pleasing six. I don't know if you saw it as Ajinka Rahani hitting Pat Cummings, Pat Hummers very early on in his innings. Yeah. It was the best looking six of the IPL so there far. So Rahani's got the turquoise hat. Turquoise hat. Yeah. They've been they've been some pretty nice ones. N- nice ones in the team that we're about to talk about next. Good drop. But before we move on, CSK have got a match tonight against KKR. Very important game. Then they've got six days off. 
mm. which I think is going to actually be important for them. You know, get, getting those get, boulders back, get, get a bit, getting getting some boulders back, getting some health, actually just resetting and thinking about where they are in the season. They'll either be three and two or two and three. Is that right? Yep, yep. correct. Um, so th- they've got some work to do in terms of figuring out what they got to do next. Then they come back. They got Mumbai and then back to back LSG. So if they get LSG back to back, they win both of those games. Their season's well and truly back on track. But but mm. that that next slate after the break is going to be the super important bit. Started the tournament at three to one in the betting. I've now drifted out to seven to one. That's Raj, double, more than double. <laughs> Raj has still got his uh, hard earned on them, which I think why he's so dismissive of some of the other teams. But um, <laughs> let, should we talk a, a little bit about Mumbai Indians and where where we think they're at? H- hang on, you've got. You've got Mumbai above Gujarat. I do, I do. Yeah, look, a few people might be raising their eyebrows thinking that, uh, you know, I've got a team who's only won one game in seventh spot on these rankings above some of these sides who've, who've won more. But look, I know that does feel high, but I would say that, uh, you know, these are power rankings based on how they're going at the moment. Mumbai base, Mumbai has had a game since then. They came in and they, you know, won it very, very convincingly. They won it with power and style. They made changes to their lineup. I uh, last week I, I bumped DC up. Very, you know, that proved to be an, an incorrect decision, but bumping them up based on they made a decision that I thought could really, you know, shape the way that their rest of their season goes. And I think Mumbai, in what they've done, bringing in Romario Shepard, bringing in Muhammad Nabi. Obviously, Sky came back as well. Didn't have much of an an impact. Is that the is that the most impactful T twenty duck in the history of T twenties? <laughs> because they've gone nowhere without him. He comes back into the side again. Admittedly, it makes naught, but they look like they look like a million dollars. The dressing room man. Mm. Yeah. He, look, he's made a few ducks. To be fair, in in uh, in his time, he's quite good at making a duck, but he's also very good at, at making some runs as well. But on the other two, I think what it did is it kind of clarified their lineup, the way that they they brought those guys in. It, it gave. More responsibility, I think, to those players at the top, mm-hmm. the the likes of Vishen uh, you know, uh, Rohit mm-hmm. Sharma, Hardik Pandya, put them up, you know, up higher in the well, obviously those two openers, but it put Hardik into in a more responsible yeah. position. To like Varma in a nice position there, Tim David, you know, it basically meant that we didn't have these guys like Namandia, like uh, Devolt Brevis in there, who you know, fine, they come in and, and done you know little little bits and pieces in those two games. But you want your best guys facing the most amount of balls and, and uh, you know, contributing. And I think that's what this did. And, and look, it, yeah, it had a, an instant impact. Yeah, for, for me, it, it looked like they got a little bit of belief back uh, with, with Rohit and um, Kishan at the top of the order there. And the way they finished that innings off with uh, David and Shepard, they just looked so powerful when they're on. No one's going to be able to stop them. The real concern, they, they've won a game. But I, there still will be some concern around the fact that they let 200 runs go and Boomer bowled four overs at under six. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when you're defending 235 and you've got Jasper Boomer in your team, that's a bit of a trump card. And, and they still put up a big, pretty big score, even with um, with the likes of him. And the, yeah. Yeah. So. I, I think that, that, you know, that explosive innings by, by Shepard has probably papered over a few cracks, really. Mm. I think if we look at, you know, the impact that that had striking at 390 and then Delhi Caps, you know, you, don't, you look at the scorecard and you go, they didn't get close, but you, t- you take that away and, and that's 20 off 15 balls mm. um, or, or whatever the equation is. They probably chased those down. When Rishabh Pant was out, they needed 80 odd. Yeah. Um, you, you would probably have said it was even Stevens at yeah. that point if, um, you know, Stubbs had kept going, if Rishad, you know, Rishad Pant had, you know, got in for even 10 minutes. Um, so, yeah, I, th- I think it's papered over the, the cracks a little bit for, for Mumbai. But what we said we wanted to see from them was, you know, we wanted to see um, the likes of Tim David and Romario Shepard come to the party and, and finish, you know, finish innings off, which is what they're, you know, what they're there to do. Um, but the plat, yeah, the platform I think set by Rohit and, and Ishan in that game was was really really impactful. I think from a bowling perspective, the thing I've really liked is the way they've used Jasprit Bumrah. He's bowled one up top, and then you know he's come back in the what ninth, tenth, eleventh over or something like that, mm-hmm. and then he's got an opportunity to bowl uh, when they need a wicket in, in the middle, and then obviously um, yeah to, to come in at the yeah come in at the death as well. So I think they've got their bowling plans um, yeah well sorted out, and I, I've liked Kutsir as well. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Anyone fun. who bat- bowls in a headband, uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> is is all right in my book. And look, yeah, he's he's looked, uh, yeah, he's looked a good, uh, yeah, g- good addition. It's funny you should say that. Like, 
it, it You're feels. Gonna disagree with oh, me. I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to do the classic yes and. Yeah. The the top six is exactly what we wanted to see from Mumbai at the start of the tournament. I think we finally got yeah. it, and that top six works. What's interesting is that bowling lineup looks good, has performed well in patches, but if you have a look at their overall season contribution, Gerald Kutsia's economy rate is ten point six yeah. across the season. Uh, Hardik Pandya's economy rate across the season is ten point eight five. Romario Shepard admittedly only played one game. His yep. economy rate is 13s. Piyush Chowla's economy rate is 11s. So other Tristan than... Tristan Stubbs took a liking to him yesterday. Yeah, so <laughs> other than Jasprit, whose economy rate is like 1, oh, 6.12, <laughs> 6. <laughs> the, the rest of their bowling attack is not is not supporting Jasprit in, in an economy perspective. And, and that's why you see a, a team like Delhi Capitals get 200, you know, chasing seconds. So those bowlers are now the ones that have got to step up because the batsmen in this game have, have done their job, really, to be fair. Yeah, and, and look, I don't think uh, I don't think this is a side that's gone, you know, I've got them seventh. I don't have them at, in fourth. They're not, they're not a side that has suddenly, you know, found all the answers. But I do think it's encouraging. But, you know, the bowling, like you guys have yeah. said, it's still a big problem. Well, they scored 245 and lost by 30 runs. Yeah. Uh, so, look, uh, earlier in the tournament. So, mm. it is a concern for them, mm. uh, you know. But if any team can turn it around, surely Mumbai can. Well, and, I mean, you touched on Jasper. I mean, that ball early bowled to for three short. I, I, you know, you, you were talking about the most aesthetically pleasing sixes before. I, I, there's nothing really, um, you know, spin and I love the ball going through the gate, but actually genuinely is nothing better than a Yorker that, that seems unplayable, like one of those deliveries that you, you actually just think there's no way that any batter, yeah. any form of crack could have hit that ball and, and that Jasper ball was was just like that. Do, do we want to say a little bit about Romario Shepard? Because that, that final over, I mean, Unric Norkia, actually the last two overs that he bowled, I think he just completely lost it, was bowling. Now, I think the, the, the over before yeah. was worse, that he bowled all those full tosses. But, I mean, that was some pretty incredible hitting from Shepard. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, it was, and, and that's what he's there to do, right? He's the, he and Tim David, like you said, Adam, are there yeah. to to finish games, and they need to do that probably more often than not. If their bowlers aren't going to come to the party, then they are going to have to come yeah. off eight eight times out of out of the next ten games. Yeah, yeah. and he's a, yeah, gun fielder as well. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I I like him, really, really like him. Yeah, who have we got in the? Are we penultimate position? Now? Eight, eight, eight. Oh, we're eighth now. Who, who's eighth? Eighth is Gujarat. Eighth, eighth, eighth is Gujarat. Eighth is Gujarat. Gujarat. And look, the, to Raj and Border, you looked at me both like, what, what is Gujarat doing down here? But I think this is a particularly bad week for them. They've lost to Punjab Kings, who we talked about before. Definitely a game that got away. And I think that they, you know, hopefully for their case, they, they won't look back and think that's the, that's the game that kind of cost us a playoff spot. They were beaten comprehensively by LSG last night, even mm. though my aunt Gyada, you know, who's been their strike bowler, was only only bowled one over. David Miller is out for a couple of weeks, which I think is a massive, a huge massive out. blow to to how their side is set up and and their batting lineup. And then Saha and Omazai were also ruled out of, of last night's game. We don't know how long those guys are going to be out. And particularly Omazai, I think, is, is yeah. again, another person that sort of changes the balance of their side. And, I, I guess that's this this week feels really ominous for me. It feels like things are starting to go wrong, and you know their bowling still feels a little, you know, still feels pretty decent when you when you look through their lineup. But that batting lineup looked super thin last night, and and look if uh, you know if if Omazai and uh, and Miller are going to be out for for any period of time, I just don't know what the solutions are. It's it's a weird one, isn't it? Because I think Kane has come in, hasn't he, for, he has. for David Miller, and that's not a like for like replacement in T Twenty cricket. Not Kane is way. a Kane is a bat most of the innings. Everyone bats around him, and everyone else gets strike rate two hundred. Kane gets strike rate like one forty, one fifty, mm. and that's the formula. David Miller gives you a completely different um, perspective and, and lens on things. So I think it's unfair to Kane a little bit to to thrust him into that kind of into those shoes because I mean he's on a bit of a, a bit of a high being to nothing because he can't do what David Miller can do on a regular basis and you know if it's if the team is now not performing as they as they were uh, it's pretty pretty tough wicket to be on for him. Um, can I just pick up on the bowling there, Stu? What did what was your comment on the bowling? Bowling looks good or bowling looks not good? I think the bowling's still really good. They're they're on paper their bowling lineup to me feels feels very very good. They've got Umesh Yadav. 
Amatsai has been really good. They've got uh, Noor, Noor Ahmad, who, you know, I love watching him bowl. He's, mm. he's got all the, all the tricks. Uh, it's going too far, but, you know, he's kind of getting on the level of Rashid in terms of what he's able to contribute from a game-by-game basis. Mm. You know, Rashid Khan probably hasn't been at his best so far, but I think the package of the, those that bowling lineup is still very good. You're going to hit me with some stats well, that yeah, suggest I mean, they're not. But they've also got Spencer Johnson. I I do think the shummy injury hurts them and Mm. probably because it it hurts them in a lot of different ways because uh, the balance of their side, it mucks up as well because they're having to play Omatsu or Johnson. They're having to play maybe more bowlers than they might like and that, again, weakens their batting lineup. Uh, Just before you come into the stats, Bordy, I think for for me, like Rashid Khan, we we talked about teams maybe – kind of sitting on him um, last year, I think, and kind of because there was that little bit of mystery. And I think we're lucky enough down here that we, you know, we see a lot of big bash cricket um, in our uh, Christmas period. And and when he when he was playing for the strikers, he was ripping through teams. And, and look, it isn't the same standard of tournament. But what we've seen is, I think, teams now not even needing to sit on him. He, he's, he's taking his wickets in ones and twos. He, he's not taking threes and fours. And also, I think that that little bit of mystery has gone. And, and I, guys are actually willing to take him on a little bit as well now. Mm. Um, so that, for me, is a little bit of a con- concern. We've seen Noor Ahmed come in, and I think he now has that little bit probably of, of, of mystery, if you mm. like. Um, so, uh, yeah, look, I think from a, yeah, from a batting and a bowling perspective, they've got some, yeah, they've got some struggles. And, um, you know, as good as Kane is, um, you know, he's an anchor. He's he's not going to be the guy that prov- provides the pyrotechnics. So, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm worried for them, really worried for them. Yeah. I, I do want to just pick up, sorry, go with your stats. Paul. No, you go for it because I'm going to finish with the numbers. Oh, okay, so with the with the betting, you're talking about how how, how thin they were. Umash Yadav betting at nine, uh, it's, it's, it's a really, really long tail in 2020 cricket. Oh, yeah. Um, and if the job's not done at the top of the order, which it, it wasn't done yesterday, chasing – 160, which we would say is a, a fairly average 2020 score, uh, which turned out to be a very good score on that pitch. Uh, they're just going to struggle. They struggled all the way down. Raul Tuatia had far too much to do all on his own at the end there. Yeah. Uh, he tried his hardest, but um, yeah, I, batting lineup, very, very thin. Umish Yadav at nine. And if you add Shami into that mix, he would have been in there as well. That would have been a very, very long, um, very, very long batting tail. Go ahead, us with some numbers. I'll hit you with some numbers. I'll just refresh my phone so I can get them. But no one in that side who's taken a couple more than a couple of wickets averages more than like 34. So Rashid averages 34. He's the highest average of their kind of main bowlers. Mm. Um, but only Nur Ahmed has an economy under eight and a half. So the, the bowlers are taking wickets, but they're also leaking, you know, eights, nines, tens. So Rashid's leaking 8.6. Um, Yadav's 10 and a half or 10 and a bit. Um, you know, Noor Ahmed's at seven, Spencer Johnson, limited sample size over nine. So the, the, the bowlers aren't doing the job in terms of keeping the runs down. And, and without Kane, uh, sorry, with Kane, not David Miller, then I think they're much more likely to be going, okay, well, 165 to 180 is our, yeah. is our range score. It's not 165 to 210 anymore. So those bowlers have to do a job and they have to be going at under nines on the whole to keep, to keep Gujarat competitive going forward. So that, I think, is the concern. And as much as I slated you for having them down the bottom of the power rankings, I think this is the side that is struggling to live up to their reputation yeah. the most at the moment. Whew, that's a bit cool because there's one at 10 that just is but we know, that. But, but we know that they've been yeah. for like I, I the think, last yeah, four I think, I think your point, I think Gujarat is, uh, you know, more subtly like in a bit of trouble here. Yeah. And they are in a bit of trouble, but and they're probably going to lose their next game against Rajasthan. But after that, they have a fairly good run. They've got Delhi, they've got Punjab Kings, Delhi again, and and RCB. Okay. So they do they could have a mm. sort of good run through the middle of that tournament. This tournament. Well, let's move on to, to number nine, and this is again, I think the, the Lipshire Index um, maybe on the fritz a little bit if you look at the net run rates. But you, well, you but, just talked yourselves around to uh, agreeing with me there. So I, my job here is to be wildly inconsistent and provide stats. <laughs> well, so I'm, it, I'm two for two. But we're, we're going to we're, we're not going to talk about the RCB at number nine, are we? We're going to talk about we're gonna talk about Delhi and and look, yeah, again. I think that, you know, they've had a pretty shocking week, you know, plummeted down the rankings from, from fifth to ninth. I think Ponting's comment was he was embarrassed by the, their performance against KKR. The, yeah. You know, they they were smashed yeah. by KKR, yeah. smashed by, by Mumbai, conceded 270, conceded 230 in, in consecutive games. Yeah, and they've got three bowlers with neck injuries. 
Well, and from well, watching it disappear out of the box. Well, the thing it's is that, done. that that is good, but the, the you know potentially the the most impact. Look, they're a side who's struggling, but I think even more so a big injury for them this week. Mitchell Marsh is out with a hamstring injury, and it, it's not a great sign. I don't think when you know you've got the coaching staff going, he's going to be reevaluated in a week. We hope he can play some other part in this tournament. So mm-hmm. that suggests you know the the reports are he's out for a week. But that, to me, suggests that he might be out for a little bit longer than, longer that. than that. And, you know, I don't think he will, with the T20 World Cup, want to be pushing things too closely, especially if Delhi's not near the top of the, you know, the top of the table, at, at, you know, at any point by the time he's ready to come back. So, yeah, I, I think there are big problems. You know, I would be quite happy, honestly, to, to put a line through these guys unless anyone is, can be able to convince me otherwise. I'm not going to try and convince you, but you, you just look down the side and you kind of wonder almost why. You you, you know, David Warner, Prickly Shaw, we talked about Mitch Marsh. Um, obviously, Richard Pants coming back from injury. Stubbs had a couple of good knocks in his last couple of games. You've got Aksar, you've got Norkia, Ishant Sharma has been around a long time. You you kind of go, well, that, that shouldn't be a side that is languishing down the down the bottom. Well coached by, you know, Ricky, Ricky Ponton, who, we, you know, we've lauded um, from a cricket uh, cricket brain perspective, but yeah, you you can't really see a way yeah a way back for them from where they're where they're at at the moment. Yeah, two bad games this week, especially from a bowling perspective. The two seventy two against KKR, I was sort of willing to go KKR batted out of their skin. The, all the stars aligned, yeah. But if it happens again, happens twice. That's a pattern, right? Yeah. That's not a not a one off. Uh, horrible bowling in the later stages. We talked about Nokia there, um, but he wasn't the only one. I don't think. It's fair to judge the batting uh, too much. Having cha- having to chase two seventy two and two thirty four, it's hard to yeah, take. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, draw conclusions based on that. But um, but to be sure, I think that he has been very good in the two matches that, or two or three matches, however many it was, he's he's played. He's looked very good. But in this one, uh, you know, when they're chasing two thirty four, imagine being one hundred and fifty for three in the fifteenth over and just yeah. being well off the being nowhere. Yeah, well out of the it. unbelievable. It's incredible. Yeah. Um, you can't win games when Nokia is conceding thirteen and over, Mukesh Kumar is conceding tens, and Ishant Sharma is conceding elevens. You can't win games of cricket when your your three premier seamers are conceding that many runs and over. And it's uh, as good as Akshar has, has been. I think he's only conceding sevens. and Great catch cool. yesterday to get, catch yeah. That and, was and, unreal. And Kuldeep's only conceding sevens as well. Yeah, but and, those he's guys, out, and he's been out as well, missed yeah, a couple so, of games. You know, I, I think, yeah, get the fork out because I think other than maybe playing spoiler towards the back end of the tournament, I think Delhi Capitals are done. Yeah. Unfortunately. That just leaves us with one with one side left, and it, it is RCB. And look, you know, we're talking about bad weeks. I, I think you know, bad bad to worse for for RCB, beaten absolutely comprehensively by LSG. We talked about my aunt Yadav kind of ripping through Cameron Green and and that RCB side. Then they lost to our you know Rajasthan after being 125 for none, and you know an excellent Virat Kohli hundred. You know, poor poor old Virat, he's uh, averaging a hundred here, strike rate of uh, 146. Few people still kind of getting on him for for uh, his strike rate even uh, in in this game against Rajasthan. But honestly, I, I guess I, I have two main questions, and, and the first one is is like can they go? Can they turn this sinking ship around? I mean they are. We, we we see the potential there. We see that there are match winners in this lineup, but it's just not happening for them in in any way at the moment. <laughs> Baldy's staring me down here. Uh, look, do I am I willing to put a line through them? I think I actually am willing to put a line through RCB for wow, this season. That's it. The main reason being is they just have to win so many consecutive games from here to actually get into the dominator eliminator um, playoffs there. We asked for wickets early on in the pay, in the in the power play. They didn't give it to us. They brought Reese Topley in. He did get a wicket um, in the power play. Unfortunately, the next partnership went for 148 <laughs> after after that wicket. Um, spin is an issue, uh, and it will continue to become an issue as the pitches evolve. Uh, they just don't have the the, the stocks. Um, Can yeah. I pick up on that quickly? Yeah. Maxwell's only bowled eight overs in this tournament, and he's he's been their most economical bowler. He's gone at sevens. Everyone else has gone at a thousand. Like, I think he needs to be game, actually bowling a little bit more. I think the game that they won, maybe I'm wrong here, but I feel like Maxwell, I feel like they bowled spin maybe six overs in that game and then, you know, 
obviously hasn't bowled much, haven't bowled much spin in the other games. I, mm. you know, whether that's correlation or, or anything, who knows? But. Well, you know, well, that's good. He's gotten wickets. <laughs> he's there to score runs. As mm. his primary function, he's got a total of thirty-two runs across yep. five games. Not uh, enough. Cameron Green has modest returns with the ball. He's scored one decent 30 uh, with the bat. Uh, so the Aussies, uh, modest returns from the Aussies, but modest returns from everyone that's not called Virat Kohli. You mentioned his strike rate there. I did want to pick up on something there. He got his 100 off 67 balls mm. versus in that same game, Joss Butler got his at 58 balls. Mm. That's actually 7 Point five percent of the innings uh, difference there in terms of in terms of balls. Mm. So when you actually put it into those numbers, it was actually quite significantly faster. Um, do I think that that's the reason they lost? No, it's not. Um, they were both very very good innings. Josh Butler did a great job chasing that down. Yeah. What do you What do you two guys think about? Um, you know, maybe to finish the pod, we talk about that. Uh, sense of what Raj said last week in terms of what you should get if you're batting at the top of the order and you bat through an innings in terms of, you know, I think you said you face 60 balls, you should have 100 on, on the board as a, as a T20 player. I mean, obviously, the pitch conditions aside, you know, that, that Sunrisers game, for example, CSK Sunrisers, 160 seemed like an okay score. So, you know, in a game like that, it's going to be different. But in general terms... Is that kind of the benchmark that we're now looking at, that if you do bat through the innings, you, you have to be getting 100? That's your view, isn't it, Raj? My, my, so let's my, start with the positive. <laughs> my view is more around the number of balls faced. We had an interesting sort of anomaly where mm. Gill batted the entire innings uh, for Gujarat, and but he only and he got eighty nine not out. Yeah, but he only faced forty eight balls. So there's actually that's actually quite a good strike rate when you do that in in terms of the numbers. Uh, I don't know why he only faced forty eight balls. <laughs> yeah. That seems strange to me, but. Usually you're batting, if you open the batting or bat up the top of the order, face half the balls, you're going to be around 60. I think a 60 ball 100 is sort of the benchmark uh, for 100 in 2020 cricket in general. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to I'm gonna sit on the fence a little bit and say uh, it, it depends. But I, I think from a Kohli perspective, what, what he needs to do is either, um, yeah, certainly accelerate in that last maybe 15 balls of his innings, um, or he's got to be given strike to the to the to the powerhouse but unfortunately the powerhouse hasn't come to the party for yeah. for, for the for, for the rcb so yeah if he's you know got face 40 balls and he's on 60 um and maxwell's in or green's in or you know someone is you know is then able to go at 220 then yeah you don't mind him facing 60 balls for 80 if the other if the other guys you know got the ability to you know to provide the pyrotechnics, but that hasn't been the way that, that their innings have panned out. So mm. you can't really pan a guy that's essentially holding your yeah holding your batting um, together. Nice to see Reece Topley come in from a. We said they needed to do something different with the bowling attack. It hasn't necessarily uh, worked from a result. But he's been uh, he's been pretty sorry. yeah he's, he's looked to, looked all right. Um, but again, you just look down that side and, and kind of go, how are you yeah how are you down there with with some of the names that they've mm. got on that. I'm on that team list. This this scorecard here that you're looking at is a microcosm of everything that's wrong with RCB at the moment in that you've got uh, Maxwell, Green and Kartik all all combined facing a total of, I think, what, 19 balls, something like that, between the three of them and only getting like 13 runs. Yeah. But that's not the return you need from, from the 19 balls from those three guys. If yeah. they're only going to th- you know, face 19 balls, they need... 35. 35 to 40 yeah. rather than 13. So that, that is that is in and of itself a huge, huge problem. Part of that is if if Coley is 60 or 40, I think Maxwell thinks, well, I've got to go now, right, because I don't have that many balls to, to work with. Part of the problem is that if Coley's batting really, really well, he's facing a lot of balls and the other guys are having to go like bang, bang, bang from the start. And if you're Tim David or if you're a Shepherd or if you're – you know, someone like that, you can do that. But but Maxwell needs 12 balls to get going. Cameron Green needs 12 balls to get going. Mm-hmm. They can't go 35 off their first 12. And I think that's part of the problem is that the pacing of the innings just isn't working at the moment. It's not Virat's fault, but part of the reason that they are struggling, I think, is that those guys don't feel like they've got enough time in the game to be successful. I do think if you asked the you know, so RCB Brains Trust you privately, 
whether releasing uh, Hasaranga was a, was a good idea. Mm-hmm. I think their view on it now yeah. would be very different. Mm. Uh, just talking about that spin issue in the in the Rajasthan game, Daga went at seventeen and over versus the other two spinners, Ashwin and Chahalu, went at seven and and eight point two five for eight overs or four overs each. Yeah, uh, it's a massive difference uh, for the, for those two. They, they'll really regret not having those spin options. Mm. Um, uh, final comment from me really is just to say none of this is on Virat in my opinion. They, those guys have had plenty of time to get in yeah. in all of these innings and they just have not performed. Yep. Maxwell in particular is going for shots, second, third, fourth ball, fifth ball, and just playing, you know. But they were, you know, Virat scored very well in the power play in yep. this game. There was, no, there was no run rate issue in this yep. game. It was those guys yeah, just yeah. came in and are not doing the job. And if he's not going to get any support, they're going to stay down the bottom of this table for the rest of the tournament. I would just like to say, me saying 100 off 67 balls is very much nitpicking. I think that is a fine yeah. strike rate. For yeah. I, I, I'm, nit- I'm nitpicking as well in terms yeah. of the way that I'm criticising Virat because he's like he's the, like you say, he's the only one who stood up and and made contributions towards winning games cricket for this team so yeah. far this season. Yeah, so viewers and listeners, I'm not criticising Virat at all. <laughs> if you've got any beef, it's come to these two. Um, look, it's probably a good place to end the power rankings. So um, episode three of those power rankings, if you are. Um, paying attention you should go and get your money on Rajasthan KKR LSG and the Sunrisers although the bookmakers pretty much would tell you that Rajasthan Kolkata and Chennai are sort of almost shoe-ins for three of those four spots and then they can't pick between Mumbai Sunrisers and the super giants with uh, uh, Gujarat Punjab RCB and Delhi Capitals already with their flights booked so um, that's uh, how the bookmakers look at it and um, The last hour has been how we look at it. We'll see you next week, but do drop your comments um, in um, the comments below um, or drop us a note at thetoporderpodcast at gmail.com or find our website, um, thetoporderpodcast.com. But it's been a pleasure chatting IPL again uh, from here in Auckland. It's good night and God bless from us all here. We'll see you next week. Good night.